everybody, Sarah with you today. I am going to be sharing with you my favorite mixed media products. It starts with some Vicki Booten Foundations paper, some acrylic blocks like you use for stamping, some Catherine Pooler reinkers, and we are going to pull in some white acrylic paint after we play with our reinkers for a little bit. So Catherine Pooler Foundations paper is one of my favorite papers to use and it is absolutely the most accessible paper <laughs> to get and to be able to use for mixed media. So that's what I'm going to work on today. You know how much I love my stamps. Something else that I also really love is when I can use products in more than one way. So I like multitaskers in my craft room. And I'm going to show you how to use an acrylic block, some re-inkers from Catherine Puller, the ones that you would usually put on your stamps, and a mini mister to create a messy mixed media background. Now there are no rules in scrapbooking and there are no rules in mixed media, but I have a few things that I tend to come back to over and over that I kind of follow when I'm creating a mixed media background. So my first thing that I always do is a diagonal design. I don't know why I tend to uh, gravitate towards those, but I definitely 100% to. I, when I am wanting to be messy, uh, I go ahead and do a diagonal design. This is a rose petal, Catherine Puller reinker. I do recommend that you swatch your reinkers onto a piece of paper before choosing which ones you want to work with because when you are using the ink from a reinker, the ink does not have the same pigmentation as when it is in a stamp pad. So it's going to be a little bit more vibrant and a little bit more saturated than it is inside of a stamp pad. I'm going to use three different colors for today's layout. I'm going to use rose petal, hot tub, and daydream. So the rose petal is going to be one color, but you can, this is the hot tub. The hot tub is almost here as a base for the daydream because the daydream is going to be a huge pop of color. I have a tissue here that I am using just to soak up some of the excess water, but some of the excess water we're going to drip and that's what we're going to do next with our daydream. I'm cleaning between colors and I know that day, this uh, this green and the blue red is going to give me purple when it mixes, which is totally fine. Here's where we get some drippiness. Another thing that you can pretty much always count on when I am doing this type of a mixed media background is that I'm going to dump way more water than I need onto my acrylic block and we are totally going to let it drip. Another fun fact, because I am using dye inks, if I get some of this dye ink on my cutting mat, it is not a big deal at all. It wipes up with water pretty quickly. No staining, no must, no fuss. Totally cool. I am using a little piece of scratch paper here to go ahead and catch the ends of my drips, but I do love a good drip. If I, uh, this is one of those other things that if I am creating a layout with uh, some, if I want to create a messy layout, mixed media layout, then I am absolutely going to do some drips. And this paper can take all the abuse you want to put on it. So another great tip when you are creating a mixed media background is do more than you think you need. For example, this looks really garish right now. I'm aware it looks really garish. <laughs> I know that that is a huge amount of really deep 
dark turquoise. But I also know that a lot of what I'm doing here is going to end up being covered up. So I want to make sure that I have enough of all of these colors that they show up on my finished page. Another really great tool that I'm going to be using today is a fan brush. Fan brushes make the most perfect splatters. Again, we're just using an acrylic block, re-inkers, and some water in a mini mister. That's it. We're going to do some splatters now. And the splatters are going to kind of mix in. So because we're using dye ink, because we're using re-inkers, these areas where I'm getting the rose petal ink onto that burnt or onto the real deep dark turquoise uh, ink, it, they're gonna, it's kind of hard to explain, but you'll see it. They're gonna kind of mix together, but simultaneously you're gonna have these big blobs of like pink. It's really cool. It's hard to explain. It'll be in the close-ups at the end and then you'll see all the pretty splatters. All right, so here I'm just showing you. See, once we start to get our photo and all the other things over that heavy turquoise color, it is not gonna be as in your face as it is right now. Something that I do love about using Catherine Pooler Rankers to create a mixed media background is that paper's dry, so you, quite often when you have a mixed media background and it dries it tends the color wants to dry back so suddenly you don't have the the color you started with you have something that's a little bit um, more pastel when you're using a re-inker that doesn't really happen as you can see here it's not really drying back. It's pretty much soaking because it's dye ink, soaking right into that paper and the color that you're getting is the color that you get. I want a little bit of a break from my background. I wanna add a little bit of white splatter. So I'm taking my fan brush and I am taking my acrylic block. I'm putting white paint on the acrylic block and then using the fan brush to get more white splatters. I love white splatters. So if I'm creating a layout that has mixed media on it, almost always there's going to be drips. There's going to be a diagonal design and there is definitely going to be white splatters. And that is where we're going to stop. I set it aside, let it dry completely, put it under a heavy book so it flattened out a little bit. And there is our finished background but not our finished layout. So next I'm gonna go through the brand new flea market collection from Simple Stories. I'm gonna choose some patterns, cut up some papers, and we're gonna create a layout on this background. So first up, I'm gonna start with my photo and I want to map my photo. For this layout, I decided to map my photo on this four by six cut apart card because I wasn't gonna use the, the uh, saying that was on the card. Plus I have that saying all in a bunch of other places. I have a sticker, I have a foam sticker, but I loved how that stripe looked and came down on my photo. So I'm just going to do a little bit of um, trimming and that is going to be our photo all matted. Next up, you know that teal that we thought was so much teal. Watch what happens when I put a six by six sheet of pattern paper and my photo on top of it. And then I add a couple little embellishments. Suddenly we just have this little pop of teal and we're gonna cover up a little bit more of it. Always add more of a color than you think you want. Because once you start to put these things on top of your pattern, on top of your mixed media background, you wanna make sure it's still visible. You wanna make sure that at least some of that work that you did is visible. Next, I punched some hexagons from some of the different pattern papers, and I'm gonna create a little bit of a hexagon corner at the top left and the bottom right. Again, I'm covering up a lot of that mixed media. We, The thing with mixed media is that you have to start out with more because it's a base, it's a background. You're not creating something that is going to be standalone. 
it's going to have things on top of it. So while you're working, grab your photos or your papers and kind of set that on top of it to help you to know where and how much more you might want to add. When you're working with mixed media, I definitely recommend using wet glue to adhere your paper to any kind of medium. So any kind of inkers, paper, or um, paint, all those kinds of things. My favorite wet glue is Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive. There are lots of glues on the market that work well. That's just my personal go-to favorite. Now I can add some embellishments. I have the floral bits and pieces ephemera pack from this line and I am going to put oodles of it on my layout. I am going to cut it apart so that it will fit underneath because I've already glued my photo down. I only glued in the middle so I know I have the edges that I can still kind of add things in. I knew I wanted to tuck a couple of things in. I'm not real happy with the way that that big blob of teal is looking on the left side, but that's all right because again, I am going to tuck some flowers in there and the teal is just going to be a little bit of a pop behind some of those florals for some fun painterly contrast. The journaling box on my page uh, has that little camera and so I want to add two more cameras and then I also want to add just a little bit of florals to my honeycomb the the hexagon clusters that I've created and that's going to bring all of the different elements together on my layout it's going to kind of flesh out that diagonal design as well Lastly, I'm going to grab these gorgeous foam stickers. I love Simple Stories foam stickers. They are so awesome. I'm going to place a couple around my layout, particularly those hearts. And I really want to use this little piece that says so cute and put it at the bottom. You'll kind of notice that my layout is a little bit top heavy right now, but as soon as I grab that so cute, and put it in the bottom right corner, it will all come together. The last little thing I'm gonna grab are some of the cute little puffy hearts. They are, there are um, puffy hearts in all colors. I was thinking about grabbing one or two stickers from the 12 by 12 sticker sheet, but nope, really love those puffy hearts. So I'm gonna sprinkle them around for a little bit of last little detail. And that is where we are gonna call this layout all done. If you are someone who loves to stamp and has the, and you have these fun stamping supplies in your stash, don't forget that you can use them in a completely different way to create a mixed media background for your next layout. Here are all of the finished photographs of my layout. Thank you so very much for joining me today here at A Cherry on Top. If you enjoy the content, please be sure to hit subscribe and uh, we will see you again next month with a new theme. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Bye.